Bury the Light from Devil May Cry 5 is one of the best pieces of video game music I've heard lately. I had the chance to sit down and ask a few questions to his composer, Kezi Edwards. We talked about how he ended up working with Victor Borba on the vocals, how he wrote the lyrics and the secret meaning behind the guitar solo at the end of the song and many other things. I'm going to share a part of the interview with you now. And I put myself in a sort of a serendipitous moment and that led to eventually one day to me getting a phone call and being like, hey, uh, <laughs> do you know what Devil May Cry is? And my head exploded <laughs> and I also had like 10 heart attacks at the same time. <laughs> Dude, like, I wonder about this a lot. Like, it seems with Beauty the Light that you were able to kind of do whatever the fuck you wanted to do. Like, it sounds like an arrangement <laughs> where you blended so many genres and you added so many things. Like, you have freaking metal guitars that sound huge, that bass that is so nasty, then you have a violin, then you have, like, the vocals from Victor. And it sounds like you gave it your all there. And was it your choice to make it as grandiose and ambitious or was it Capcom? So I would say Devil Trigger was more born in the light of kind of do whatever. I felt like they were really just kind of looking at me to try and find that sound. For Bury the Light, they had a lot more in mind for that. Um, they sent me maybe about 10 example tracks all over the place. We're talking about anything from 1992 Pantera to like 2010 EDM rock wow. stuff that I've never heard in my entire life. And I, I'm sitting here taking all this in, and I'm just like, yeah, like maybe like a, a, a millisecond of this song is Virgil, but th what is this? Like, I, I was trying to understand what they were trying to show me. And I'm, in my mind, I was just transcribing this in my head as I think they just, they really just want to make sure that these little elements that you can pull from Devil May Cry or Virgil's personality are put into this whole thing as one big picture. One of the things early on was no distortion guitar was allowed anywhere but the chorus. Damn. And at first, I hated that. I hated that limitation. Yeah, because to imagine. me, I wanted, I wanted, yeah, I wanted to make like the most badass metal song. And I, how can I do that without guitars in the verses? Yeah, it sort of like harkened back to me. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but Mick Gordon's GDC chat where he was talking about Doom, and they told him no guitars in the whole score at all. Really? Like, I, I, yeah. So the first Doom. I, oh if anybody God. hasn't seen it, please go watch Mick's GDC chat about Doom. It's he's got more charisma than anybody I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life, and he also does a great job at explaining kind of the the walls you have to hurdle over in this in this industry as a composer. That's uh, insane. Um, like, and he wrote BFG Division like as a as a fuck you. Like <laughs> right. Damn. Okay. Well, yeah, he, he explains it pretty well, but I, th I think it sort of harkens to the same thing that I'm, I'm trying to get at here is eventually you were, you were able to come to a wall where it, it gave you a limitation and through that creative, creative limitation, you were able to come up with something different. And then he married those two ideas together. So if someone hadn't told me no guitars in the verses, I wouldn't have had that, well, fine, I'm just going to make the biggest bass you've ever heard mm, and yeah. I don't care. Yeah. That's, that's where that idea came from. I was, I was kind of, I don't want to say upset, but, you know, when you're sort of like, well, what am I going to do then? And then I was just like, well, I'm just going to come up with, like, the biggest bass sound that's just going to sound as gnarly as a guitar anyways. Where are they going to... It's yeah, synthetic. That, they they it's challenge you. I think, like, uh, that's where creativity breeds from challenge sometimes, mm. you know? When you can do everything, yeah. you don't know where to start, you don't know what to do. But if they, they <laughs> give you a limitation, yeah. then you find ways. Yeah, they had a bigger hand in guiding this track than they did in Devil Trigger. Devil Trigger, I was sort of like, what do you think about this? They're like, sounds great. What do you think about this? That's cool too. Uh, with Bury the Light, I was I was already stressed out on my own because to me, Virgil, he means a lot to me personally as a character and he has a lot more lore invested in this this storyline so far than Nero did. Um, so there was a lot to represent. I mean, he's such a, he's emo, he's angsty, he's sad. I, he, I feel like there's so many things you can pull out of Virgil's storyline. Um, so I was like writing down just tons and tons of lyrics, going on a lot of walks, just trying to not even be around music at all. I wanted to know also, like fans wanted to know, if the references to like Devils Never Cry and, and Devil Trigger were intentional. So I'm glad you asked because I definitely wanted to talk about this. I mean, like as soon as you hear the bury the light, da 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 da, I mean, it's the exact same motif from Devil Trigger. And um, I remember when Allie heard that for the first time, she was like, I don't know. Some people might think you're being lazy. <laughs> ah, no, no way. People fucking love yeah. it. You know, they, they love to hear because it tells a story. Yeah. I started to explain that to her in the way that I'd hoped to one day explain it to fans. I'm like, no, to me, this is like, this is a separate third act. Like we've already had like, at this point, I think the song was at like six minutes. I'm like, we already have a song. I could ship this and it'd be done. I'm not happy yet. Something else needs to happen here. Something about Virgil I've not yet described and I need to get that out. So to me, this was more of a personal vendetta. Um, I think Capcom would have already been happy with what I had done. Yeah. They had a song. 
Um, but I was like, no, I, I have to do this um, for, for two reasons. One, I need to be able to represent Virgil the best way that I can possibly imagine. And I don't know if I'm ever going to write for DMC ever again. Capcom has this really rich history of bringing in new talent for each, almost each iteration of Devil May Cry. And I, I really like that. I really respect that. So for me, it was sort of, I needed to represent Virgil. And two, I might need to say bye to DMC in some way. So to me, that big ending where you get the, the Devil Trigger uh, reprise and you get the, I think, more of a penultimate feeling of how to sum up Virgil with those last few lyrics. Um, to me, that was just sort of a, a personal thing. That sounds like, that, now that part sounds even more epic. Victor mm. did a freaking insane job, by the way. How did you get him on the gig? Like, were you guys friends or? So I got the call that they wanted me to do Virgil again. 50 heart attacks, sweat, <laughs> all this stuff happens immediately, especially when I heard the word Virgil. Um, man, I was, so, I was so happy, though. Uh, anyways, the first thing that came to my mind is, shit, I have to write music now, and it, it can't suck. Like, I was so stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next thing was, I got to find a vocalist. Like, I, oh, my God, who's going to sing this? And I started thinking about what I wanted, and I was like, man, this is so much. I'm thinking, like, these high parts and then screams. Like, it has to have some metal. Um, that was one of the other limitations, by the way, early on. They told me no, no screaming. Damn. So I was like, eh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly the first thing I wrote in my mind, I remember going for a walk and I came up with the, the whole, you know, my family crest is a demon of death thing. And I was like, it's kind of cheesy, but I think if we do it the right way, I might be able to deliver that line where it feels a little egocentric. Mm -hmm. And I think Virgil's got a, a lot of that inside of him. I just imagine you going on a walk, people walking around you like, <laughs> hey, what's up? And you're like, my family crest is... <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably looked insane. Uh, but that, but, but it, it works very well. Yeah, so I'm thinking about all these different parts and the, the amount of dynamic contrast in the vocals alone that I need. I'm like, well, here we go. So I go into YouTube and I just start searching for covers. And then I found uh, some of Victor's covers of Periphery songs. I'm like, oh, Periphery, that's actually a great... Uh, a great way to start for covers. Yeah, because he, he's got some... He's got screams, he's got some really tender parts... Um, so I start sifting through some of Victor's stuff and I was like, I found some really interesting, like uh, some Japanese anime covers that he did where it's like really high, beautiful falsetto. Mm. And then I'd switch over to a periphery cover he did. And it's just like the most gut wrenching metal screams you've ever heard. I'm just like, well, yeah, this is the guy. <laughs> This is the it. right amount like, of bipolar vocals. Yeah, no, I, I needed that range, and he's he's got an incredible range. Like he can sing up to that high D, no problem. Um, and he's he can sing pretty low too. Yeah, that like the way he sang is very surprising. Like uh, that's that's the thing that shocked me. Just to say, uh, call back to what I talked about earlier. I think you should always give people you collaborate with a little bit of room to breathe. I felt a little bit more restricted in that just because we're working on serving Capcom, not me. Yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to serve myself. I'm trying to serve Virgil at this moment. So I did have a lot of specific things I wanted him to do, but he added in some really, really nice stuff that I didn't ask for. Um, you mentioned in your video, the slides. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't ask for that. My version was really blocky. Da, 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 I'm, so, da, da. I'm so glad that he <laughs> added those because it, it's the... I find when you make music, it's the small details that really make the songs. For me, like when I release yeah. a song... Many times for me, I'm like, okay, this like two minutes and a half suck, but this passage right here is the <laughs> is where the sauce is, and I want people to, to listen yeah. to the sauce. So I'm gonna publish three minutes of shit so they can listen to those thirty seconds. That <laughs> that's that's kind of how it feels to me for my music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I hear those details, I'm like, you know, obviously, Birds Light is all fucking amazing in every way, but those details really added even more to, in my opinion, to the song. Yeah, he added a great turn in the bridge section too. I can't remember exactly, but it was like. Um... Crimson Joy, Joy. Mm. Like he does like that kind of stuff in the name. Like I didn't ask him to do the turn there. Man. My version just went like name. You know, like I was like, oh, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Like I, I keep that, keep that. Like don't change that. It's completely motivated. That's that's what people would yeah. say. This is just a small part of a full one hour interview I did with Kezi where we talk about how he got to compose for Devil May Cry. We talk about Devil Trigger and his collaborations with Mick Gordon and much more. You can check out the full interview at my new podcast channel called Alex Bukala Music Podcast. And that's where I'm going to have conversations like this with your favorite game composers and ask them your favorite questions. So if you want to check that out, I'm going to link that down below and you can check out the interview with Kezi. Family Jewels, as well as Final Fantasy XIV singer Jason Miller. I'll see you there. Bye.